And now we will officially welcome her. Please do that for Vanna White. Vanna! Vanna White rose to fame when she became the co-host of popular game show Wheel of Fortune in 1982. In 1988, Samsung Electronics America Incorporated, along with David Deutsch Associates Incorporated, created a series of advertisements depicting Samsung products in what they thought were humorous depictions of the future. The ad series featured a crude prophecy of the paleo diet, a trash TV host as a presidential candidate, and a robotic replicant of Vanna White hosting Wheel of Fortune in 2012. Defendants referred to the ad as the Vanna White ad. Unlike the other celebrities used in the campaign, White neither consented to the ads, nor was she paid. Following the circulation of the robot ad, White sued Samsung and Deutsch in federal district court on three separate grounds. First, appropriation of her likeness without consent or payment in violation of California Civil Code, Section 3344. White's second claim was that Samsung violated California common law right of publicity. White's third claim was that Samsung violated Section 43A of the Lanham Act. The district court granted summary judgment against White on each of her claims. White appealed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. On appeal, the Ninth Circuit affirmed in part and reversed in part. The common law claim and the Lanham Act claim were both remanded for jury determination, but the California Civil Code claim was dismissed. On remand from the Ninth Circuit, a jury found for White and awarded her $403,000 in damages. My Feminist Rewrite is a partial concurrence and partial dissent. I plan to focus my opinion on my dissent of the majority's interpretation of the California Civil Code claim. Wheel of Fortune has become must-viewing for millions of Americans, and its hosts have become cult heroes. Vanna White has been the hostess of Wheel of Fortune since December of 1982, making her the longest-running hostess in the show's history. White earned this position over hundreds of applicants, and after a trial period where she split co-hosting duties with two other women, White became the permanent co-host. White became highly popular among the young female demographic, and also gained a fan base of adults interested in her daily wardrobe, in a phenomenon that has been referred to as Vanna Mania. White also found enormous success outside of Wheel of Fortune. As a result of her fame and popularity with viewers, White was often approached to endorse products, commanding high fees of around $250,000 per campaign. White's roster of advertisements included television commercials for Choice Hotels and Spring Air Mattresses. During this time, White also had a line of Vanna White dolls sold through the Home Shopping Club, acted in several TV shows and films, created a workout video, and released a best-selling autobiography. Vanna Speaks. At the height of Vanna Mania, Samsung made the conscious decision to capitalize on White's image for commercial gain without compensation and without her consent. Meanwhile, the Samsung ad campaign portrayed Morton Downey Jr., often called the pioneer of trash TV, as a presidential candidate. Despite his contentious public image and smaller fan base compared to White, Downey was paid for the use of his image by the defendants. Samsung's ad series reinforced gender stereotypes. In the future, men, regardless of how little positive impact they make on society, are presidential, leaders, powerful. By contrast, in the future, even commanding and successful women can simply be replaced by robots. Some people do look at me for a job and say, you know, I mean, what is she doing? Do you call that a career? Do you call that a job? They call women furniture strokers. The choice to portray White as a robot stripped her of her autonomy, control over her body, her livelihood, and indeed her very humanity. The term robot is relatively new. First introduced by Czech playwright Karel Čopek in his 1920 play R.U.R. or Rossum's Universal Robots, the first depiction of a robot in film was in Fritz Lang's Metropolis. The film features the Robotrix, who is created by a scientist after he kidnaps Maria, the object of his affection, transfers her likeness into the Robotrix, and sends the Robotrix to kill his romantic rival. The trope of replacing women with a subservient robot is sadly not a new phenomenon. Robots in pop culture are a symbol of male dominance and subjugation of women. They are subhuman, created for man's pleasure, and sold for man's commercial gain. Female robots are often inextricably linked to men's sexual needs and desire for control over women. They replace a sentient, complex human woman with a controllable creature that represents a man's idea of the perfect woman. This perfect woman is an essentialist view of what women should be, 
and is often boiled down to two roles, the sexual object or the domestic servant, sometimes both. Such robots are designed according to cultural stereotypes of the perfect woman, being sexy, silent, and obedient. They are often unique products made to fit a particular man's desire. Fictionalized representations of female cyborgs reinforce essentialist ideas of femininity. Such essentialist ideas may present as sexual or gender stereotypes, with the perfect woman often being portrayed as thin, white, busty, heterosexual, and able-bodied. Among the few non-eroticized fictional female robots is Rosie the Robot Maid from the television series The Jetsons. However, she still fulfills an essentialist idea of femininity in her performance of stereotypically feminine responsibilities like cooking, cleaning, and looking after the children. Laura Mulvey argued that women portrayed on screen are a commodity and subject to the male gaze. Vanna subverts the male gaze by capitalizing on and taking charge of her own image. This case represents more than simply using White's likeness without her permission. Samsung's advertisement speaks to a much deeper issue in our society, where women are seen as nothing more than objects for male pleasure. And if that object becomes too difficult to control, she can easily be replaced. By failing to pay or consult White, Samsung has effectively replaced her. Let the jury verdict serve as an indicator of society's views, either as a signal that women are not objects to be used, abused, and replaced, or as a continued acceptance of the exploitation of women's work. White should be given the chance to fully recoup the income that was unjustly denied to her, and more importantly, fully reclaim her personhood.